guys, Fede here. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I review African literature. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I hope and pray you're going to have a fantastic week. So my video for today, I am going to be reviewing the book uh, Diaspora Dreams by Andrew Chatura. And as always, I'm going to give you guys a feel of the author and also the synopsis of the book because I, al I always think it's important for you to know to know who the person who's writing the book you know maybe if you find this book very interesting or maybe you have questions it's very good to also have the face of the author and you know you can actually communicate with them because writers and authors are now you know a bit more open to communicating with the readers so i'm going to read andrew's uh bio and andrew chatura is a zimbabwean writer resident in england he receives uh he received an ma in media culture and communication from UCL. Andrew has written and published uh, widely on topical issues with, with This Is Africa publication. He is principally interested in the global politics of inequality, which he interrogates through his writing. Diaspora Dreams is his debut novella. When he's not writing, he's working on his PhD thesis on digital piracy with Birmingham City University universities school of media and english so that is andrew's bio and the, the synopsis of the book um diaspora dreams is andrew chatura's debut novella it details the life and struggles of kundai Maf mafira kureva a zimbabwean immigrant living in in the united kingdom when kundai departs a failing zimbabwe from for the greener pastures of England, he is convinced that his luck will immediately change. Yet what he finds in the UK convinces him that all that glitters is not always gold. Chatora takes us on a journey that acquaints us with uh, Thames Valley, where Kundai must um, negotiate his place and his voice in a world where African men are not welcome. Set against the backdrop of petty classroom squabbles, um, that constantly rema reminds Kundai of his lower status as an immigrant. Diaspora Dreams exposes the tensions of working in the diaspora. The pressure of Britain also bared down on Kundai's family and relationships, threatening, in the words of Dubois, to tear his soul asunder. So that's the synopsis of the book. So you kind of have a feel of what's going to be happening in the book. And let's get into the video. So as always, when I go through a book, I always, you know, I'm, I'm always keen on knowing the kind of themes that come out of the book. And these are some of the themes that I pick uh, that I picked out. Obviously, there are so many other themes, but um, these are going. These are the themes that I actually managed to like kind of pinpoint for those who are quite specific with what they like reading. So number one was gender role. So just to give you guys a background, because I've read the book, so I kind of know in detail more what's going on. Uh, so Kundai, he go, he comes to England uh, to be with his wife, Kay. So Kay, remember, that's the first wife, right? And she's pregnant. And then when he gets here, he, he faces racism as soon as he gets to Heathrow airport you know and as someone who's been through that it was kind of like a wake-up call you kind of i could actually relate you know when you come here that's when you realize okay i'm black you know i think i've said this in so many videos but that's what usually happens when you come here that's when you know like okay the atmosphere has actually changed so when kundai gets here he stopped at heathrow and then they kind of like question him and that kind of thing and then he comes over to the uk and another topic which i got from there I'm not discussing them yet, but I'm just giving you guys a background from what I understood after reading. Um, they go to live with uh, Kay's sister, but on the second day, they are chased out of the house. And this is something that people in the diaspora have actually faced where their relatives actually, you know, they let them down. Even after they say that, you know, they are going to take care of them. And then um, Kundai and Kay, they go through like so many different challenges. They end up getting divorced. And then Kundai um, ends up being with this uh, with Zeti. So Zeti is uh, she was also a teacher where he was also teaching, and she was a white woman. And I found that he was very fascinated that with the fact that he was you know dating a white woman because I would I'll actually explain it later like my perspective because obviously when you're reviewing a book it's what you understand and what you see because all different readers we all have different perspectives, and as time goes on. 
um, he goes through all these many things and I, I kind of found it very hard to read this book because I'm a mood reader so sometimes I read according to my mood like if I'm in a happy mood I'm very happy to like read something you know joyful bubbly and then if I'm kind of feeling down I could pick up something you know along those lines but not obviously to depress myself no but you know just to I can't really explain it but it's not to depress myself obviously so with this one because of the writing style it was quite difficult for me to read but at the end which everything that was happening you get to understand that you're actually reading his personal diaries because he has mental health issues so he's in a mental health institution so afterwards that's like the last chapter I was like oh okay that kind of makes sense because the way that you know it was written it was kind of like detached in a way but after knowing that you know he actually had mental health issues i got to understand a bit more that you know with what was what exactly was going through and what exactly was going on so number one will have to be gender roles so as kundai as a typical african slash zimbabwean man you know the dynamics back in zimbabwe and then here they're quite different so uh when he came here i think it was quite hard for him to have Kay uh, take care of the bills and take care of him because he wasn't working, was in a very restrictive visa, so you, you could you could not do anything at all. So Kay was the one who was who was working, and also because it's in the first narrative, and considering the fact that he also has mental issues, not that I'm saying that's the the whole reason why he was acting like this, I find him to be very unreliable because. I find him to be a character who did not take accountability sometimes. He seems to be, my perspective, of course, he seemed to be a character who kind of like felt like he was, he was, he didn't have any, anything wrong that he was doing, you know, even when he was having the affair with Zeti, it did not seem as if he was remorseful. It was more to do with his enjoyment and how he was exploring and, you know, being very adventurous with Zeti so i think when he came here it kind of like hit him in the face that you know k was taking care of the bills and also how the law seems to be on the side of women not only on the side of women but also it understands women in that way because as much as i understand back home the law um it doesn't really favor women let's say if you if you um report domestic violence some actually some will actually just brush it under the rug they don't really uh you know do anything about it but when he came here you kind of saw that it was quite different but uh with the gender roles i think it was quite hard for him to actually accept that you know Kay had a job and then she was doing this and that but because he was quite unreliable and i'm not really sure i don't know because i'm a mood reader sometimes i kind of have grudges with characters it's something i did also with akin from stay with me i really really did not like what he did so i kind of have like grudges with characters but that's nothing to do with the writer it's more to do with the character itself because as a reader you're dealing more with the characters you're not dealing with the writers so i find it that he was he was finding it very difficult to actually come to terms that you know women here they actually make money and then Kay was you know she was making money and i think Kay at the end she ended up like conducting what was going on with the money and these are stories that i've heard here where you know uh people or married people they end up saying oh because she's working she makes more money now she's like conducting or she's like you know ruling the house and that kind of thing and as someone who had just come back was just come from zimbabwe i can understand how it was very hard for him to understand that you know only on the basis that he was coming back from zimbabwe and it was a new environment for him here so that's that's what i picked when it came to gender roles like being reverse being reversed but in that sense also i feel like you know Kay, she kind of took advantage of that because she ended up like fabricating things for him to get arrested he ended up having a police record because obviously here in the west if you say that someone is abused you they are very quick to take action so i think k used that to manipulate kundai especially when they were when they were getting divorced and you know things were not working out between them she then should use that power to actually say oh he's beating me up so he ended up having a record and when you have a record it's very hard for you to find employment because that record stays with you until kingdom comes so i think that was also something that you know kundai was go was was actually going through and I'm actually going to elaborate more on the knot.
in the on the next topic or theme so point number two or theme number two uh was evil women or misandry so this is not like on the basis of feminism this is just women who are just evil women who do not care at all so whilst could I now as i say they're like gaps so i kind of had to like pin it together to see okay now we're here now we're here which is quite hard for me but obviously if you're someone who kind of likes those kind of books where you kind of have to guess that okay this is what's going on because i think for me the hardest part was for me for me was actually knowing that you know his mental health issues were at the end of the chapter because to be honest with you if you're a first if you're a beginner if you're trying to read i think this might be a bit too much for you you know i think it would be better if, especially if you're trying to get into reading i think this style of writing might not be for you yet so i would encourage you to start with something which is a bit more um straightforward you know that this is not straightforward but the writing style is quite different so as i was saying theme number two it was evil women so in his life when he moves to the uk kundai he meets different kinds of women and the most um he went through was when he was teaching high school so mind you he's an english teacher in england so he's a black man in zimbabwe african teaching english to english children so you can imagine the kind of like battles he was facing at school with the teachers with the children but with when it comes to evil women you know at school they were like principals they were teachers you know they were they were actually like they were very hateful you could tell that they were very hateful towards him and it was something that really affected him mentally of course because these were microaggressions that were going on they would say things like oh your class it seems like they're not doing very well because you it seems like you're not paying attention to your class and you know just things that would just irk you you know those kind of things like microaggressions i think if you're someone who understands microaggressions like the smallest thing you'd know okay this is coming from a racial place which is another topic i am going to talk to talk about because the topics they're kind of like linked together so i might be talking about two different topics at the same time but i would definitely elaborate so when it comes to evil women there were women at his school who were doing all these things trying to like pull him down and i think he found solace in zeti because zeti seems like he was a place of comfort for him because she was quite different and also k the way that she was a bit vindictive towards him you know which to an extent i understand why she would do that why she was you know begrudged in that kind of way but that that is also not an excuse for you to be evil to someone else and there was also his second wife which we're going to talk about Jacinda Jacinda betrayed him and she was quite evil because she did not disclose to him about his HIV status so he actually found out by mistake that she was HIV positive she did not tell him over the course of their relationship the course of their marriage and this is some of the things that actually happened because i i was reminded of um lola shonen she was talking about how in african literature we need evil women because as women in some books not all of them some books i'm talking about african literature it seems like women were portrayed as poised as nice as kind all the time but we're not i think i've said this so many times ia femi she was my favorite from um the secret lives of baba shege's wife because she was she she showed a side we, we don't really like people seeing as women but we do have you know that kind of side which is not favorable and f- for me personally i think we should not restrict ourselves to think that you know we are nice people when you're not I, i'm i'm an advocate for you to actually acknowledge your feelings by acknowledging your feelings i'm not saying be hateful or be very evil to people but i think just by you know trying not to express your feelings it actually makes it worse because you're frustrated you become you know just not a very nice person so it's very nice to have this kind of characters where you kind of have women who are also evil nothing to do with feminism you know or trying to put the feminine to try to push the feminist agenda but they're just pure evil they are evil towards other women they are evil towards men you know it's nothing to do with feminism because i think now in this day and era if people here say he evil they are very quick to say it's because of feminism but sometimes that's not always the case you know sometimes people women we can just be evil just like that and i think that was something which was really portrayed 
in this book because at first i was like okay maybe he kind of like doesn't like women that much but as i got to read i kind of picked certain things that okay no it's not that he doesn't like women at all it's actually because women do this women have also have evil tendencies women kill women destroy women lie you know i think we we all know but i'm not saying everyone does because i think at the end we're all grouped as one as women we're not you know we're not a monolith we're not the same all of us you know i'm different from my friend my friend is different from me i'm different from my mom i'm different from my aunt but i think when it comes to women when you say women are evil we're all grouped into one everyone out thinks that every woman is evil you know but we're different people with different perspectives with different character so point number three it's ha it has to do with uh immigration matters so kundai as i mentioned before when he came here i was in a very, very restrictive visa so he ends up getting a job from one of the roommates where they'll be stay where they were staying with k and because the person i think his name was um I'm forgetting his name but i think he was from ghana and uh he knew his situation so he ended up taking taking advantage of him so they would like threaten him manipulate him and say you know we know your situation don't get too big-headed or when he was trying to let's say because they were washing cars so or when he was trying to like um wash cars when they were not there they were threatening to say oh we know your situation don't think that you're clever and those kind of things so he kind of like drew, drew him back and i've heard of certain certain situations where you know people who know your let's say if you don't have like the right documentation people actually take advantage of you and people back home actually not very much aware of this because they will drain you i'm not sure if you've read americana you know what obinze went through when he was in england so when he was in england he did not have the right documentation so he ended up using someone else and that person i think was charging him 45 percent of his income all the time and i've actually heard of stories like this when you're using let's say something like that or you're doing something like that people actually charge you for using their names so kundai he was going through that and you know he was getting very frustrated because he couldn't be freely himself he couldn't get the job that he wanted because he was a trained teacher from back home um in zimbabwe so it was very frustrating for him getting peace jobs where he could not fully be himself and these are situations which actually happen here in the uk and it was quite refreshing to see it from that point of view that you know he was actually frustrated and also being able to talk about it because i think now there are more books you know that are actually talking about the situations i know like for zimbabwean books there is uh painting a mirage by rumbizai Rashuri. there is also harare north by um brian chikwara so like zimbabwean zimbabwean writers are now actually being more vocal about these situations because most people don't um, really understand especially when they're back home they don't really understand you know the plights that people go through when they're here so it was quite refreshing to also you know read those kind of stories point number four um was uh black tax so if you're an african and you have family back home there's a fair chance you you pay black tax. So black tax, for those who don't know, it's you take care of family back home, and that includes the extended families, your aunts and uncles and their children, the ones who change your diaper when you're three months. Apparently, you're supposed to remember them, or it's very dis disrespectful. So you're also supposed to like take care of them. And I think this is something which actually aggravated Kundai and also led to his divorce with Kay, because from his narrative from his narration k was giving him mom money but when it came to giving um kundai's uh, mother or family money she would say she doesn't have money and she would actually direct to say okay this is going to my mom it's not going to my dad so kundai i think she kind of had a fractured relationship with her dad because not kundai sorry k she kind of had a fractured um relationship with the father because the way that kundai the main character explains his mother-in-law he was quite vile he did not like his mother-in-law so he was saying that you know she just she wanted money and she would actually pin her children against each other because she would want she just wanted money and there are people who actually do that you know they they just want money and you know it kind of divides families and also for someone who will be in the diaspora paying all this black tax did they black tax sorry 
they end up not having a life of their own you know because they're constantly working 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 and because they want to cater for those who've taken care of them they keep breaking their backs you know so this was something that was actually highlighted and it actually led to to it was one of the major major problems in their marriage which actually led to their divorce so black tax is something that really has affected uh, black people and you know there's a video which i watched trevor noah was saying that you know his mom was like you don't need to pay me anything like black tax just take care of yourself we don't need your money here and i was like mm, it must be nice so you know a lot of people they go through black tax and i've heard of conversations where people were saying that you know black tax might be one of the reasons why you know most black people don't actually succeed because the little money you get all of a sudden you have more people to take care of so let's say if you're someone in the diaspora and you're working constantly to try and build a life for yourself you might not be able to attain your dreams because most of the money keeps going back home and in a way it doesn't really improve the people back home because they'll just be relying on you so it kind of I'm not saying everyone i'm just saying like there's similar situations where i've seen people actually relaxing because they're like okay that person is going to take care of us but until how long and they also need to understand that you know that person needs to have their own life so they can actually you know take care of their own needs and also when they want to have a family at least they have something to fall back on but this is what majority of people in the diaspora go through and it was great having it highlighted in this book so as i mentioned before there's also racism so with racism obviously as i said as soon as he came in he faced racism and also the microaggressions which we face on a daily basis oh my gosh some of them you end up thinking that maybe this is normal it's not they're actually microaggressions for example i'll give you an example my name is Rudy, right people actually have the audacity to toy with my name and say oh rudolph or they'll be like oh my gosh your name is very unusual is it okay if i call you this no don't learn my name in it but it's because not because you know you're being rude but it's actually my name you know why do you have the need to change my name when i can learn your name you know it's just as simple as that so there were microaggressions which happened in kundai's um life as a character and you know he kind of just had to ignore them because obviously he was at work he couldn't overtly express what he was feeling or what he was thinking because he was definitely going to be fired because there were people who actually didn't want him there and he had missed so many opportunities because of his race you know you could tell that okay this is because of racism i remember there's a mention of like there's a guy who just who came in and before i think it was like three months he was already promoted so you could actually tell that you know it's not because kundai was lazy or because he didn't know what he was doing but it was because of his race you know and i know most people will say it's not always about racism but there is racism because i think we can't really just ignore and say it's not because of that because there is in institutionalized uh, racism you know some people actually end up not getting certain jobs because people don't have the patience to pronounce their names or to you know just in general there are so so many things which actually set people back which have to do with racism so it's like a huge tapestry and so many different strings threads woven up together so it will really take time to really kind of um explain all these microaggressions and all these racism things that happen when it comes to black people so it was actually quite good to see kundai actually um you know try and express these things even though they were like in his diary but you could see that when he was going through it he was really he was he was really depressed you know and he, he also tried to kind of like balance it because i remember there's a chapter where his mom was sick and one of the teachers was like okay you can go home for two weeks and you know don't worry about it we'll take care of business here that kind of thing so he knew you know you know when it's a microaggression you know because i know most people will be like oh how do you know it's racism how do you know it's racism i think as a black person you would know because there are certain things that you face on a daily basis that you're like okay this is a microaggression or sometimes you're just saying okay this is not racism but it feels like racism or sometimes it might not be racism but i know i personally when it is racism you will know it is racism so when it came to kundai's character he didn't know how to differ to actually tell the difference if, if it was racism or if it was someone who's actually you know 
saying something uh or maybe let's say if he was wrong you know even though he what he didn't take total accountability on certain things especially when it came to like his personal life sometimes you could tell that okay this is not because of racism or this is completely because of racism so the next point has to do with um, mental health in men so as we get to learn at the end of the chapter um kundai he actually had mental health issues and it was actually quite sad to know that you know no one really took the time to really sit down with him and ask kundai okay what's going to happen what's happening with you are you okay and you know it's because of the patrick you know men are not allowed to have emotions to show that they're hurt you know to know to show that they're depressed and those kind of things so it was quite heartbreaking to realize later on that you know he actually had mental health issues and then he ended up going to like uh, a mental health institution and i was reading somewhere um there was something circulating and it was talking about the percentage of suicides like 81 percent of suicides are men and you know because they don't really have a safe space to actually be able to express how they feel it could be something to do with finances it could be something to do with relationships or just you know just your emotions so it was some it was very eye-opening because i think as africans when it comes to depression in general you know it's not seen as something which is a major you know it's seen as like a white people disease but it's not black people get depressed black people are not always strong all the time we don't have to be strong all the time we're human beings okay we have emotions we have feelings and they're all valid so i think um it was very sad to see that you know kunda was going through this there was no one there and the fact that you know he went he went through a lot you know as much as he's unreliable even let's say they were all made up things but you know now looking back at them if they were if they did happen in that sequence you know in his life they were quite depressing for example him going through the divorce him actually like the police coming for him and saying that you know you're not supposed to see your children because i think you could only see his children when he was supervised and also zeti that's the white uh his white girlfriend cheated on him with his brother and then they had a child so all along he was taking care of a child that's not his own you know what was going on at work missing on promotions you know because of his race they were very depressing and also his second wife jacinda not being very truthful to him and she also had she also had hiv and she did not tell him at all so you can tell it was it was very traumatic for him to go through that and i i actually thought maybe like his mental health had to do with like um the depression and having to do with um hiv but he ended up being negative so i don't think um it was the writer's intention to write like that but it's actually very good because it actually had a bigger picture of um mental health in men and i i think a while back I wrote uh, something to do with mental health in men and I think there's a I'm forgetting his name now but there's a Zimbabwean man who's been doing this thing to do like there's a bench I think now they're catering for men they used to do it like for women in the rural areas where they would come and then they'll talk to them to do with mental health issues I'm forgetting his name but I'll try and leave it in the comment below because I remember watching his TED talk and he was now saying they're now catering to men for men in Zimbabwe to also talk about their mental health for someone to be there for to be there for them and to listen to them so it's actually it seems like we're actually progressing and here in the uk i know they have certain services but you know i think we also need to like dismantle this whole thing of saying men are not supposed to show emotions men are not supposed to cry i always tell my brother if you're feeling something say it if you want to cry go for it because at the end of the day you're human first before you're a man or you're a woman so one of the major topics for me was the black woman versus white woman narrative obviously like i said i'm a mood reader so it's not like i read this book when i was in a bad mood or anything because i actually managed to like finish it even though as i said it was very challenging for me because i could not relate to this character personally for me it was just you know it was very aggravating for me to read um this character because of of course the narrative him not being accountable him not being very he was trying to make himself very likable but then you can be like okay maybe it's because of the mental health issue but the way that he described k i know that they went through a lot 
but in my opinion i thought there was like this the character kundai was proper pushing the narrative of angry black women because i could understand that you know where k was coming from because he cheated on k with seti but they were, they were already going through the whole divorce thing but they also they already had the issues and stuff and we're all entitled to our own opinions okay if that's not what you see that's fine but this is my opinion and what i saw so it seemed as if he was really pushing the narrative of the angry black woman and as a black woman to an extent i was like hmm okay maybe this is something that we really no need to talk about because obviously as i said before this is nothing to do with the writer it's more to do with the characters so i think we kind of need to understand that you can't associate as much as you know people say your art reflects who you are when i read books i separate the writer from the characters because their world of their own you know as much as they're born from one person they kind of like have a world of their own so i was actually quite perplexed by this whole thing narrative of angry black woman because kundai she was begrudged because of what had happened to her you know uh and the way that she took revenge obviously was you know not very favorable in certain ways like for example her reporting that you know kundai was being abusive her not wanting him to see the kids but at the same time it was just the way that kundai spoke of her it was just like okay okay and then the way that he talked about zeti mind you zeti actually cheated on him with his brother but i found that he was super forgiving when it came to zeti you know even when she when he found out that you know um she had a child with the brother he was not as outraged or did he ever say some very mean things towards zeti because for me that was something that really stood out for me i was like mm, okay me as a mood reader i was like i need to know more about this so i think this is something that you can actually explore you know like trying to see exactly where kundai was coming from because as a black woman you know we're always pined against this if you're not a strong black woman which i'm not i've said this so many times you're either an angry black woman an angry black woman that's someone who's like speaks their mind and then they're like oh it's just we're just being gaslighted to say oh, okay so you know those kind of things you're just angry for no apparent reason no our emotions are very valid i've said that before but with this narrative i was just it was quite hard for me personally as a reader because obviously i had to be when you're reading i'm a reader before i'm a reviewer so you know as a reader it was quite challenging for me because i kind of saw like kundai was really was really driving that but at the end he apologized for that but it wasn't like he was very remorseful because i felt like i was left hanging in a way to the way that he responded to that even like um when it came to like his wife jacinda the second one i think um he kind of like withdrew in a way so it kind of villainized her. not that i'm saying she wasn't wrong but you know there are just certain words and certain things that you see in a book and you're like okay i think this is what you're trying to say that kind of thing so yeah that was my narrative when it came to the black woman versus white women because as black women it's like we're expected to suffer for love you know we don't have to we don't have to go through struggle struggle love because it's like when we're growing up where we are trained to endure so much which we do not have to but i think kundai he kind of had that mentality because even his in-laws they didn't like k when they were married and they would say so many mean things but she would endure and i can understand why she was angry i can understand why to a certain extent she didn't want the kids to go and see the family know that i'm saying they should not have but i'm just saying let's say if it's to happen to me that might be my first reaction you know like first first reaction before i actually sit down and start thinking that you know maybe this is what i should do you know so i think that for me was a bit outstanding so uh i also like i said i found it quite challenging due, due to the fact that i'm a mood reader that's the thing you know and the writing style for me was quite different so like i said it was a very dif different perspective which is quite good because you know we don't all want you know books which are written in the same so this was more of like a flashback you know i love flashbacks but i think with this one what i found very hard was because 
I wasn't like pre-warned in a way. So I just went into it and thought, okay, this is what's going on. This is what's going on. Until you get to the end, that's when you realize, okay, this is actually like a flashback. So maybe if you're not someone, if you're someone who likes straightforward things, this might not be the book for you as yet. Not saying that it will never be a book for you, but as yet, because you know, I think with reading, you need to be quite gradual because let's say if you just pick a book, which is not something you're very keen on that might actually put you off reading. So I would recommend this to people who are a bit more mature-ish in reading, who like to have, to think a lot when they're reading, you know, because for example, I don't like being spoon fed, but I like you to show me, but don't tell me too much. And I think this book was a bit, he described so much. And obviously there are people who actually like that kind of style, but for me, I'm quite different because I, I want you to, you know, show me with your words paint a picture with your words don't like tell me what's going on so yeah so that's what those are my thoughts when it came to diaspora dreams and also something that really made me laugh or that made me kind of like um uh have a different perspective to this book was how kundai was using like big words so obviously because he's a teacher he's an english teacher but also i think as zimbabweans we kind of have this thing of using massive words so it kind of reminded me of home and i really like that because i was like oh my gosh i've actually forgotten that we use like these massive words you know like we are like a thesaurus you know we kind of like find different ways to describe one thing so it was quite refreshing for me to be like oh my gosh at home like people used to do this so i really enjoyed that so for me i would say for this book i would give it a three star out of five because it was my first time kind of exploring that kind of writing style and as i said before um i i, I wasn't really ready or i wasn't like pre pre-warned that this was actually like a diary that you know he was kind of it was we were reading his diary in a way for us to actually get to the end where we get to know what happens to kundai so i would recommend this book to anyone who's uh, who likes challenging their mind who likes big words or who just like who, who enjoyed the, the kind of topics that i talked about but if you're a beginner or if you're someone who's looking into something a bit more cheery uh maybe later for this one but definitely i think maybe if you want you can definitely add it to your library so thank you so much you guys for watching this video and until next time goodbye